Hello everyone, David here. I don't really cover any one thing on this channel, it's sort of whatever piques my interest at the time. Um, and I wanted to show you the Razer Kishi, or Kishi, let's say Kishi. Um, it's a game controller for your mobile phone. The phone sort of clamps in the middle and then the controller bits go on either side. And it has a very similar feel, once you've got it set up, to something like an Xbox or PlayStation controller. So if you're a veteran from those consoles, um, you'll feel right at home here. It's kind of uh, a good way of turning your phone into something like a Nintendo Switch Lite. Um, obviously it only plays the mobile games on that platform, but more and more games now have controller support on mobile, so it's kind of a really convenient way of gaming on the move. So I want to look at some of those games and also how to set up Steam Link and PlayStation Remote Play so that you can stream games to your phone and use the controller while you're on the move or while you're on holiday. Okay, let's go. So this is what it looks like when you get it out of the package. Um, pretty compact little unit. Um, you uh, unfold it by pulling on these two little tabs here and then this uh, plastic back plate comes out and then you are free to pull it apart. Um, it's a little bit elastic, so although it goes quite wide already, you can pull it a bit further. Um, I was a bit scared to pull it too hard at first, but I think it's sort of loosened up over time. And then there's a, a lightning port here, so you line that up with your phone and it fits the iPhone 12 Pro Max incredibly well, actually, in terms of the height. Uh, so it just sits in there very nicely. Um, and then around the back, you can see that back plate now stretching across. Uh, so you're now free to game with this thing. Uh, if you're worried about battery life, um, there is a charging port down here, so you can charge it up while you go. Uh, and I think this little light here is to tell you that you're player one, so it's the first controller. So just in case you've got other controllers already connected by Bluetooth, um, you know that this is the first or second or third, which, whichever one you want it to be. You probably want it to be player one. Uh, so yeah, let's have a look at some games. So if you download an app called MFI Controller, uh, made for iPhone, uh, then it just lets you test out all the commands and make sure all the buttons are working. And then loads of games are supported. So um, probably my favorite game on iPhone is Genshin Impact. Um, and this works really well with the Razer Kishi. So the only slight downside is that you have to keep going into the controller settings um, each time you want to change it to use the controller. Um, I hope that's something they change in a patch, but once that's done, um, it works incredibly well with the controller. Um, I've reconfigured the controls so they're a bit more like uh, the Witcher on PC. Um, but yeah, it's really nice, you know, you get one controller stick for looking around, another for movement. Um, and it's just really responsive and makes the game a lot more fun because your thumbs aren't in front of the screen kind of blocking your view. Another game that's supported really well is Transistor. Hey Red, we're not going to get away with this, are we? And you know, you might be thinking, oh, it's a kind of a shame there's no uh, headphone jack uh, or anything like that. But actually, if you've got a pair of uh, Bluetooth earphones, then uh, that works just fine anyway. So in fact, even more convenient because you don't have wires all over the place. So you do kind of have a headphone option that way. Yeah, so this is a lot of fun. And again, it just kind of uh, frees your hands off the screen so you can see the whole thing. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, if you're a veteran Xbox or PlayStation player, then uh, this is going to feel very normal and natural to you. Sky works particularly well as well, and if you're a fan of Journey on uh, PlayStation, then uh, I think you're going to like this on mobile. It's a very similar feeling game, and um, yeah, once you have the controller, um, very similar feeling to play as well. So what's really cool is that some quite old-fashioned games like Streets of Rage 2 or Sonic are um, 
supported by the controller, um, even though these are probably running in an emulator. Um, but yeah, they work really well. And then there are some older games that have obviously been ported to phone, like Jade Empire, um, and that works as well. So, you know, if you have a dig around, you'll um, find some games you like that are well supported. You are gracious as always. So, so far I've been very positive about this device. Uh, what about the downsides? Well, um, you know, there are still plenty of games that aren't supported. If you want to play Mario Kart, um, you know, you're still stuck to the touchscreen controls. Um, it doesn't even run in landscape. Um, and I think that's because Nintendo don't particularly want to cannibalize their own system <laughs> on the Nintendo Switch. Um, also, I would say the triggers are not quite as good as a kind of standard Xbox controller. Um, they're pretty small, so I think Razer didn't have a lot of space to work with. And they're good for what they are, and it does help keep the unit uh, small and portable. But yeah, they're not quite as good. Um, a little bit mushy and small. Um, and yeah, no headphone jack. And the whole unit is kind of expensive at £100. But I guess if you've already paid for a mobile phone, that means you're just paying £100 to make it a mobile gaming system with a controller. So that's not too bad. So one of my favorite things about the Razer Kishi is that it supports uh, Steam Link and PS4 Remote Play uh, really well. So uh, this is running on my desktop computer and streaming over the Wi-Fi uh, to uh, my phone. And um, yeah, and it's, you know, pretty sort of compact on this small screen, especially if it's meant for like a massive desktop screen, but you know, technically it works really well. And it means that I can play something like The Witcher 3 uh, on my phone right here, and it runs really well. Uh, the cool thing is as well that um, all of these buttons have a function. So you have uh, your start button down here, and then a kind of home button, which returns you to the Steam screen if you need to. Uh, and then this works a bit like the select button on an Xbox controller. So this is all fine if your desktop PC is on and running Steam. It can connect easily that way. Um, but what if your PC is turned off? Well, Steam can actually turn on the PC if you're on the same local area network and Wake on LAN is enabled. And to do that, uh, you need to turn it on in the BIOS for the PC. You also need to turn it on for the network card. And then in Windows 10, disable fast startup because that is a feature that never properly shuts down your PC and it means it can't be woken over the LAN. So once all of those options are enabled, your mobile phone can turn on your PC in order to start streaming games over the local network, which is really cool. But if you're kind of on the same local network, that suggests you're close to the PC anyway, and maybe that's not, you know, all that useful. Um, so the very cool thing is that if, with a little bit more work, you can set up a system to turn on your PC over the internet. And let's go through that now. I suggest you buy a Raspberry Pi. I got the Raspberry Pi 4B from eBay for about £40 and a case for a few pounds and then a micro HDMI adapter for a couple of pounds as well. It, it didn't add up to all that much. I installed Raspberry Pi OS and connected that to my router. I then went into Pi OS settings and enabled SSH, so um, the secure shell login feature over the network. Um, and then on my router, I forwarded any SSH requests coming from the internet to the Raspberry Pi. So that means while I'm out of the house, I can connect to my home IP address, the IP address on the internet, and SSH into my Raspberry Pi 4. And from there, uh, once I install another package, I can send a Wake on LAN packet over the local network to my desktop PC to turn it on. I've simplified that a little bit more by installing Pi Helper on my mobile phone and then creating a custom command so that I just need to tap that to send the wake packet to my desktop PC. So I am now out of the house. Uh, I'm on a different Wi-Fi. Um, let's see if I can log in over the internet and start up my computer completely remotely. So I'm gonna open Pi Helper. So I should be able to see my Raspberry Pi over the internet and I can indeed see that I have a connection to it there. So uh, I'm gonna go on there and run my command. Ran the command, I think that probably started up my computer. Um, so now I'm gonna try uh, running Steam Link and I should be able to start my game. So it's checking. So there you go, there's a nice green tick which shows that it started up the computer and now it's ready to stream some games. So let's try something out. Let's go. Do it. 
So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. It's not quite as good quality as playing it locally um, or even through some kind of professional streaming service like Stadia, um, but it's good, you know, and it means that I can play something like Persona 5 Strikers on my mobile phone even when I'm on holiday somewhere, because I've got my own entire home cloud streaming game network now. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Similar thing with PlayStation Remote Play. Um, once you've paired the mobile phone and the computer, um, that should be good to go from any place in the world, um, as long as you both have network connection. And here we go. This is my home PlayStation streaming over the internet to my mobile phone and being very usable with this nice controller. Um, let's try again. Hello. Welcome to the Detroit Experience. I'm an android and I'll be your hostess. Do you know its name? I haven't got a clue. Does it matter? I need information to determine the best approach. And one final thing worth mentioning is just how to put it away. Um, after you take your phone out, like this, um, you just want to make sure that when you collapse it, you get these parts to kind of like interlock like that because you don't want to break these small plastic pieces in the middle. And then once it all goes together, it has a really satisfying click and then it's ready to go back in your rucksack. So there you go. I think this thing is pretty cool and I look forward to traveling somewhere in the future and playing full fat desktop games on my mobile phone. I think the downside is the selection of games that you can play on mobile natively, um, mostly because the price of games on the App Store has to be so competitive because there are so many freemium and cheap games that a lot of companies don't see the point in porting their game from PC to mobile phone. But when you can use Steam Link and PlayStation Remote Play, you kind of get around that, so it means that you have actually a pretty good games library after all. Okay, I hope you found this video useful. If so, leave me a like down below and you can help me out by subscribing to my channel as well. Okay, see you next time.